We're back with the incredible Retro Lotus 110. Last time we tested it outside on the road, but this time we've brought it inside a wind tunnel to find out once and for all how fast this thing really is and how it compares to a modern aero superbike and cutting edge modern TT bike. Which is going to be the fastest aerodynamically? Let's find out. Oh, and thanks to everyone that watched the previous video on the Lotus 110 because it's, well, through your support as viewers and your subscriptions to the channel that we have more budget and more resource and can do bigger and more exciting and more expensive things like visit a wind tunnel. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so as well. It helps us out and we really appreciate it. Right, let's get to it. I'm really excited. I oh, I really can't wait to see what happens. Previously on GCN, we tested the Orbea Orca Aero and Lotus on the road and found that the Orca was 13 seconds faster for me, but one second slower for Sai. However, the wind tunnel is a far more controlled environment and will give us more accurate data. And as a bonus, we've also brought along the latest Canyon Speedmax TT bike as well to see how that stacks up against a UCI illegal bike nearly 30 years its senior. We have the help of Dr. Xavier Disley and the Aero Coach team, who are renowned Aero consultants to help us perform our tests. Zav and his team perform Aero consultancy for top bike brands and world tour teams. And once again, we also need to thank the legend that is Steve Grimwood of Elmy Cycles in Ipswich. Without Steve and his generosity, these videos wouldn't be possible. So if you want to say thanks, give the video a thumbs up and visit Steve's shop and bike museum. We're going to test all three bikes at 45 kilometers an hour and 55 kilometers an hour. 45 because that's a standard TT speed and 55 because that was Boardman's record average speed in the Tour de France TT. We're also going to perform a yaw sweep of the bikes to give a more accurate picture of how the bike's aero performance translates in the real world where aero isn't always head on. So the first thing we're doing at the moment is getting some bike only data and this will allow us to compare the bikes on their own before Ollie goes and sits on them um, and it also allows us to check the tunnel and make sure that everything's working okay today. First run we're going to do on the Orbea Orca Aero and if you're wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses inside it's not because I'm trying to be like Bono it's because it's health and safety in the wind tunnel you don't want debris flying into your eyes. So, run one, let's do it. Will you start the fans, please? Just like Richard O'Brien in the Crystal Maze. Aero hoods, same position I adopted on the road. Let's do it. It's time for the Lotus 110. I'm really excited about this. A couple of important things to bear in mind though. So the wind tunnel is just measuring aerodynamic drag, not the rolling resistance of the tires. And the tires on this are quite old tubulars. They're much slower and have much more rolling resistance than the modern tires on the modern uh, aero road bike, the Orbea Orca. So that was something that hampered this when we tested it out in the real world, but we we're removing that here. So that'll be interesting. And the other thing to remember is that the 110 is a compromised version because it's a time trial bike and it needs gears and brakes uh, than the 108 track bike it was based on. But more on that in the, uh, in the tech video over on the tech channel where we go into a bit more nerdy detail. So, right, let's do it. Will you start the fans, please? I love saying that. Time now for the Canyon Speedmax. It's got a reputation as being one of the fastest time trial bikes available to humanity on the market. And unlike the Lotus, it's UCI legal. Let's see, uh, let's see how it gets on. Will you start the fans, please? 
<laughs> Never get sold. <laughs> So the final test we're doing in this comparison is the Canyon Speedmax in a more modern aero position um, and obviously it's a more modern aero bike. We're testing him again at 45 and 55 kilometers an hour, uh, but as you can see his position looks really, really aerodynamic compared to the older Lotus bike, where his position was a little bit more traditional, the sort of thing you'd have seen in the 1990s. We've done the runs, we've got the results. Z Zav, I'm excited. <laughs> hit, us, hit us with the numbers. Like, I mean, how fast is the Lotus? So what I thought was quite interesting was that we did bike only uh, before we did a lot of the uh, position testing. And because the Lotus doesn't have a lot of integration to it, so there's a lot of exposed cables, the base bars are quite round as well. Um, we only found that there was a half watt difference between the Orbea road bike and the Lotus bike when it was bike only. Um, that's at 45 kilometers an hour doing the, the your sweep that we did. So only half a watt, which is basically nothing. That's mad, that is, yeah. that is mad. Yeah, if you look at the Orbea, it's very, it's very clean. So there's not much to it. It does have that integrated storage, uh, which should help to speed it up a little Some bit. Some fairings on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and although it doesn't have a disc wheel or a tri-spoke on the front, the whole bike itself is, is, is very clean. And there's obviously a lot more technology these days to enable you to make a, a fast bike. So there's not a lot going on to the bike. Whereas if you look at the front end of the Lotus, these days, although the frame itself looks good, the front end is, is a little bit more um, retro, shall we say, with exposed cables it's and round bars everywhere. It's, it's fair to say. It is, it is a bit more messy than but in its But in its defense, and this is something that I think a lot of people who watched the previous video didn't necessarily grasp, is that it is kind of like a, a, a retro-fitted bike. They, they, they've, it's, they've taken the 108 and then they've retro-fitted brakes and gears on it, which has, in the eyes of many, compromised the design. So I think if we put a 108 up against it, that would be considerably quicker. Absolutely. So much cleaner. Yeah, or even if you just put modern aero bars uh, with more airfoil shapes instead of the round bars on the front, it would instantly be a lot, a lot faster. Um, we also found that when we tested the Canyon Speed Max, again, this is at 45 kilometers an hour with a Yule Sweep, um, that was 3.4 watts quicker at 45 kilometers an hour than the Lotus. So about four watts over the road bike. Now that's not a lot, but remember you do have aero bars that are in the wind, which obviously help when the rider's on the bike, but on their own, they do present frontal area and they yeah. increase drag on, on their own. Yeah. Um, but that's not the point of those bars. The bars are designed to, to get you into an aero position. Um, so bike only, everything was you know within four watts. Uh, which it's is all close. pretty close. It is pretty close. However, when we put you on the bike, then we started to see differences. We put you in an aero hoods position on the Orbea. That's the sort of thing you'd do if you were doing a TT oh, on that, a road That's bike. what we did when we rode round. Yeah. Captain Turdville on our course, I was holding that position as best I could. Exactly, so uh, with a rider on in the aero hoods position on the Orbea, compared with the Orbea and the Lotus, when you're in a, a let's say, a retro aero position on the Lotus, with very, very low, um, uh, quite stretched out with your arms a little bit wider, um, then the Lotus was 16.3 watts uh, better. So it was, you know, aerodynamically, you were saving 16.3 watts on the Lotus at 45 kilometers an hour. When you got on the canyon in a more modern aero position, there was an additional 25.3 watt advantage um, from jumping on that bike compared to the Lotus. So if you then compare that to the Orbea, it's 41.6 watts. So between the road bike and the TT bike, both modern bikes, it's over a 40 watt difference at 45k an hour. And the Lotus kind of sits a little bit more in the middle of those two. So it's not much. It's not much at all, is it? Not, not if you compare yeah, the, the, the difference between, I'd say, the, the road bike and the Lotus is, is really not that much. But what about at 55 kilometers an hour, the speed Boardman achieved in his record time trial? Well, the difference has become bigger. 22.9 watts for the Lotus and a rider over the road bike in an aero hoods position. The Canyon Speed Maxim rider was 69.8 watts faster than the Orbea, which would easily be worth one to two minutes in a 10 mile time trial. 
The fact that the modern TT bike is so much faster than Boardman's Lotus really does put into perspective how good his record-breaking TT ride was. And if you want to find out more about him and the man behind his bike, Mike Burrows, well, we've got brilliant GCN Plus documentaries on both of them. The one big caveat that I would put on this, though, is like the, the, the modern time trial bike position and that's, you know, my, my position that I've got on there, is sustainable. I could ride that and do a very long ride on that and hold that position. The Lotus position is like that old school position where you're very low at the front end and yeah. that, I'm struggling. Yeah. Um, that, that is, uh, yeah. So yeah. that's another sort of thing to... Yeah, so, so if you then took those two bikes outside, um, forgetting about things like tires and stuff like that, purely your ability to output the power would increase that gap between the two quite a lot. All we've done is just test the pure aerodynamics today, yep. whereas there's much more to it than that. Yeah, and that's the other, the, there's a lot more going on here, such as the, the rolling resistance to the tires. So for a more detailed analysis of everything that's going on, we have got that video over on the tech channel where we're gonna get super nerdy. So make sure you go check that out. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this video today. Big thanks to Zav for his expertise in the tunnel. Also, Steve Grimwood, legend, for bringing his, his Lotus 110 again. And we've got a load more wind tunnel content coming out. So if you like this kind of thing, make sure you subscribe to the GCN Tech channel because it's all going to be on there. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.